There are many staples of Halloween, some of which include buying or making costumes, spending time with friends or family, or going out trick-or-treating. Halloween is also the perfect time to get a good scare. I mean, we all enjoy a little thrill in our lives, and what better time to get a small jump in energy than on Halloween? Whether it be going to a commercial haunted house, or a real one, watching a scary movie, listening to your favorite scary narrators, or gathering around the campfire to tell a haunting tale, we all enjoy the different aspects of Halloween. Furthermore, we acknowledge the importance of the different aspects of Halloween, and in my opinion, one of the most important aspects of Halloween is the jack-o'-lantern. Every Halloween, everyone, or most people rather, go out to the pumpkin patch and try to find the plumpest pumpkin they can find. If you do, then you probably understand why we do so. To make the best jack-o'-lantern we can. Or to make a pumpkin smashing video. Regardless, it's a mainstay for the holiday. Every year, different places host competitions for the best pumpkin carving, or for the best pumpkin themed food. In short, it can be argued that a fifth of Halloween, or October in general, is dedicated to pumpkins and the jack-o'-lanterns. Even still, for such an important artifact, few people know where the tradition of the jack-o'-lantern came from. So let's start with the origins and the legend of Stingy Jack. The legend has it that a blacksmith, known only by Jack, invited the devil out for a drink, to which they both laughed, shared stories, and ultimately had a really good time. Then came the final bill. Jack, seeing the price, didn't want to pay with money from his own pocket. So he convinced the devil to change into a coin, so he could settle the tab. The devil did so, flipping into the air and falling straight into Jack's hand. With a grin, Jack skipped out on the bill, and put a silver cross on the coin, so the devil couldn't transform back into his original state. The devil stayed like this for years, and kept belittling Jack, and demanded he'd be freed. Jack, after some time, understood the consequences, and complied with the devil, under one condition. Jack made him promise that he wouldn't seek revenge on him, and wouldn't claim his soul when he died. The devil agreed, and Jack promptly set him free. Although, this wouldn't be the last of Jack's trickery. A year later, Jack was drunk, and wandered into the forest. It's there that the devil ran into Jack again. They walked for a while, and Jack asked the devil what he was doing in the forest, to which he replied, Jack, to be honest, life down in hell is getting kind of boring. I have to deal with the souls of bad people and often they claim they didn't do anything wrong. I'm tired of the same repeating process. They come to hell, whine, and then are kept there, and punished for eternity. The devil kept on going like this for a good while, and then Jack decided to halt the conversation. He told the devil he was immensely hungry. The devil, in his sympathetic state, told Jack that he could climb one of the trees and drop down a fruit for him, and so he did. He climbed a tree and searched for fruit. As he was climbing, Jack, drunken and practically out of it, decided to pull a prank on the devil. Like before, he decided to trap him again. This time, however, Jack carved the cross onto the tree, and the devil couldn't get down. The devil was furious, as to be expected, and told Jack if he ever got down, he would make him suffer. Jack, afraid of ever the odd forest walker coming by, told the devil he would release him under one condition. The condition that the devil once again not take revenge and not claim Jack's soul. The devil agreed, and left the forest, apparently vanishing to hell, in an angered state, and Jack was relieved. Unfortunately for Jack, he would only have one more year to live, and when he finally died, he was presented with some bad news. God would not allow him into heaven, and the devil, keeping his word, rejected Jack's soul at the gates of hell. The devil, still upset with Jack, gave him a piece of bright burning coal to light his way. Before Jack left, the devil teleported right behind Jack and told him, Good luck in your own hell. A message that sent chills down Jack's back. Unable to carry the coal any longer, due to the intensity of the burning sensation, Jack found a nearby turnip. He carved it out and put the coal inside. Since then, Jack had been left alone, forever wandering the countryside of Ireland with his makeshift lantern. According to the natives, they could often see the light Jack's lantern emits. Henceforth, the locals would dub these lights Jack of the Lantern, or more simply, Jack-o'-lantern. Surprisingly enough, the first Jack-o'-lantern was initially a turnip, or any vegetable that could hold a light, or candle for that matter. Making vegetable lanterns was a tradition of the British Isles, and carved out turnips, beets, and potatoes 
were stuffed with coal, wood embers, or candles as impromptu lanterns to celebrate the fall harvest. Children would often run around with their DIY lanterns and scare people, pranking them into thinking that they were the spirit of Stingy Jack. Between the 1600s, when Irish immigrants made their way to North America, their tradition and legend of Stingy Jack followed. However, when they got there, pumpkins were found, and in an abundance as well. Pumpkins were easy enough to come by, and good for carving, and got absorbed both into the carved lantern tradition and the associated prank. Over time, children would carve out crude faces on the pumpkins, making them look more like severed heads in an effort to scare even more people. By the mid-1800s, Stingy Jack's name had resonated with the children, and they applied the name to their carved pumpkins, earning them the name Jack-o'-lanterns. By the end of the 19th century, Jack-o'-lanterns exploded in popularity. They went from a trick to a seasonal decoration. It can be said that the Jack-o'-lanterns really kicked off in popularity when a mayor's wife from Atlanta in 1892 hosted a Halloween party where her house was adorned by dozens of lit jack-o'-lanterns. And the rest is history. Jack-o'-lanterns are essentially a must during the Halloween season. It's kind of weird just to not have them exist during that season. They're literally everywhere and most places sell them in various sizes for a pretty low price too. So why not cover up your own pumpkin this Halloween? Make it as frightful as possible. Well anyway, let me leave you with this little factoid. Did you know? The term jack-o'-lantern was first applied to people, not pumpkins. As far back as 1663, the term meant a man with a lantern, or a night watchman.